All right, I am here with Mark Rasunovich, who is a hero to many of the IT pros that are out there. And um, <laughs> what, uh, what, you've been here for about two years now, right? Yep. Oh, just a little over exactly two years, actually. Okay. And uh, what, what, have you had any surprises since you've been here? Uh, surprises, let's see, surprises. Um, well, the, the company's about as bureaucratic as I expected it to be, so that wasn't so much of a surprise. Uh, things move a little bit slower here than they do at a company, your own company that has 80 employees, and you've got 90,000 here. Um, uh, one of the surprises, actually a very pleasant surprise, in contrast to those unsurprises, uh, was that Sys Internals has remained basically unchanged. One of the things that Bryce and I were concerned about when we came to Microsoft is that the bureaucracy would embrace it and want to exploit it and put it into under policy controls and actually it's been left pretty much untouched. It's just me and Bryce and a PM that have continued to run it and it sits up on TechNet. The, really the only difference is that it's got a Microsoft label on it. Okay. How, how much do you guys do a lot of development work with that? Um, we do about as much as we did before we came to Microsoft. So it's always been sys internals and writing and speaking have always been hobbies for me, kind of creative outlets, and I've got to continue that here. So it's a lot of sys internals development happens in the morning before I come to work or on the weekends or in the evenings or I'll take an hour in the middle of the afternoon and work on it. And Bryce is the same way. And so it's just about the same as before, same level of activity. So you pretty much just work all the time then? Yeah. Well, <laughs> if you count that as work, I don't count that as work. And that's one of the things that makes me love what I'm doing is that it's not work, it's really fun. It's a hobby too. Okay. What else do you do? I mean, other than develop the sys internals tools. Um, so that's one of the things that I've always tried to do. So I don't get bored or stuck on any one particular thing is to try to do a whole bunch of different things. So it, whether it's, like I said, speaking or working on the tools or writing, uh, those are things that I've got more direct control over and have as an outlet. And then there's, of course, the day-to-day -day kind of things that, that I do. Before it was working on products at Winternals, and now it's working on Windows and day-to-day -day kind of architectural oversight and input into feature teams about what they're doing with the current release of Windows, Windows 7, as we're seeing that through to completion, and then also doing longer-range things with Windows, like architecturally where should Windows be going, what are the important things Windows should be addressing in the next five years, and so looking further out past Windows 7 into Windows 8, Windows 9 kind of things. Have you gotten to work with Bill Gates at all? Yeah, it's, that was another very cool thing when I got to Microsoft. So first, he interviewed me. He interviews all the technical fellows and distinguished engineers that come to the company. So I, I got to do an interview with him before I came, which was the second time I'd met with him. I'd actually gotten the opportunity to meet him uh, about two, two or three years before I came to Microsoft, and it was as a favor from Jim Alchin, who was the former head of the Windows org and the plat actually platform division before Kevin Johnson took it over. And I had a good relationship with Jim going back into the, the mid to late 90s as I was working on working with Microsoft on Windows internals and coming to campus. So I had this meeting with Jim and said, hey, it'd be really cool if I got to meet Bill Gates. And he said, oh, I can arrange that. So he set up a, a meeting with Bill. Me and Dave Solomon both went to Bill's office and Jim was there and we hung out with Bill for about 45 minutes and just chatted about things like Linux and Windows and multiprocessing and, and it was cool. I got some pictures from that. So that was the first time I got to meet with Bill, but it was more, you know, nervousness, kind of, wow, this is Bill Gates, I'm meeting Bill Gates. But when I came to Microsoft and I'd had that interview with him on the phone before I joined and then I came to campus, I started to have regular one-on-ones with him. So every six to eight weeks, I just schedule a one-on-one -on -one and I go in and they were always scheduled for an hour, but amazingly they always ran for two hours, sometimes even longer than two hours, every single one of them, which was just really good. And we just talk about Windows, all the different security, virtualization, um, all the sorts of different topics just for that state separation, application model. And uh, so that was really fun, really cool to be able to just hang out and chat with Bill. I gave him a tour of the Sys Internals tools once on his computer, <laughs> uh, which is really bizarre. <laughs> um, and uh, it's really kind of nice that actually, so he's now kind of retired from day-to-day -day, uh, operations here at Microsoft, but he's still coming into work one day a week uh, after his summer vacation. So 
I guess in September, he'll be coming into the office here on campus one day a week, and I've got actually another one-on-one -on -one with him scheduled for when he comes back to talk about some things that we were talking about the last meeting we had. Okay. So, so yeah, did, very, very cool. Yeah, that's cool. Does Bill, Bill surprise you at all, kind of like, you know, in any way, like with uh, what he knows or anything else? Um, it's, you know, it's like when you meet somebody that you've seen from a distance and has got this larger-than-life persona, and then you sit down and meet with them and start to get to know them, a lot of, some of the, the misconceptions or the I part of the image that they've got, you know, you can, you get past that and you actually see what the person's really about and what they're like and, and you know, his guard is down and you're just, it's like t talking with anybody. It's, which is, you know, you sit there and go, wow, I just had this regular kind of conversation with Bill Gates who, you know, for me, uh, you said that some people consider me a, a, a tech hero. Well, if Bill's one of my major tech heroes. I think he's probably, for a lot of people, just, you know, the kind of success story, focusing on technology and then uh, obviously really doing what he loved to do and getting to where he was. A lot of people want to know kind of what's, what's coming up or, or what's, what's the future for, for Winternals. Uh, Winternals was the commercial side of things, and that was acquired along with Sysinternals. And the Winternal stuff, has made its way into various products and uh, um, it's kind of, uh, I don't, I'm not directly involved with the continuation of those technologies. Uh, the most visible one is the, the admin pack or URD Commander which is now the Microsoft Desktop Diagnostic and Repair Toolkit, MS Dart. I always have to think of what MS Dart stands for. A great name, right? Very catchy. Did, did you come up with no, that? I don't okay. Have anything to do with it. ERD Commander is much cooler, right? Yeah, much that's, cooler. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, so that's the internal side of things. The sys internal side, like I said, it's just me, Bryce, and and a PM, Curtis Metz, who runs the forums and the and the site itself. So Bryce and I are kind of charted. Uh, we've got ideas for things that we want to improve. Like there's a number of enhancements I want to put into Process Explorer. Uh, very low level kind of things like being able to, to do a, a more comprehensive analysis of memory usage of processes is one of the things that I want to do there. Process monitor itself, we've got something really cool that we should have coming out in the next few weeks and that's network tracing. So right now process monitor does real time file system and registry monitoring and thread and process monitoring and we're going to add TCP IP activity as well. Not capturing actual packets but you can see this process that sent a message to you know this at remote address or this website or did it get or whatever, mm -hmm. along with the stack traces, which is uh, and allows you to root cause you know where's this operation coming from in this process some DLL inside of it is actually generating this activity and by looking at the stack you can see that so that's a very cool thing I think kind of fleshes out rounds out process monitor as a file system i o registry troubleshooting tool. Mm -hmm. Did you ever have any considerations for having NetMon3 integration of any sub source? Um, so the, the thing with NetMon3 that process monitor is really, you know, fire it up, watch what's going on, quickly identify basics of the behaviors. And so it doesn't capture all of the data that being read or written to the files, for example. And so it just didn't make sense to capture all the data being read or written to uh, the net to network uh, endpoints because really analyzing that means working with NetMon through all the plugins and there's you know thousands or whatever different protocols and and that would have meant having to do a lot of work and repeating what NetMon does or plugging into NetMon somehow to to get that to happen. If people want more just network tracing then they should be using a, a network capture tool like that for just why is this what is this process doing any network activity is it who's it trying to talk to where is it getting data from then process monitors the easier tool to use for that kind of thing. What about security mon monitoring? Because I know we have auditing and stuff, but I, it, it seems like that's one component that's that's not quite, you know, that's not there, right? With with auditing of maybe WMI objects or, you know, AD. Is that something that we thought about? So well, I'm not sure what you mean, security. Yeah. So so like for some there's security access type problems or yeah. permission issues to accessing a certain component or UI or things like that for, for troubleshooting? Yeah. So Process Monitor does, with file system and registry, a lot of the permissions issues are located in those areas. Um, for active